Good evening. We're going to do another tarot review and we're also going to do a small reading. This is a continuation of my sort of Halloween themed uh, series. There is going to be uh, another deck that is bought at a Halloween store that is a fake tarot deck I would like to discuss and a very, very beautiful deck. Probably, I feel like, the most beautiful deck I've ever seen. And this will be in a coming video. Now, now that you've seen the uh, coming up soon attractions, uh, like you would at a movie theater, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. So today, we are doing the Halloween Oracle deck. We have Stacy DeMarco created this deck, and it's amazing. I like Oracle decks, sorry, I love tarot decks, but I like Oracle decks, but I love this Oracle deck. This Oracle deck is just up my alley. <laughs> kind of like the Halloween one was, except this one is less cartoony, and definitely, as you can see with the realistic looking skull on the front of the box, way more realistic. So, the nice, sturdy box is not going anywhere. In fact, the box is so big, it's too big for the cards, but it is perfect for the book. And the back of the cards, the back of the book is this sort of mishmash of Halloween symbols. So the guidebook, like the previous guidebook, has a little bit of a foreword, and it has something that I also want to try, which I will after we get over the deck, is the giant jack-o'-lantern spread. And I'm excited, I've never done anything like that. Um, but I'm really interested in seeing how that works. So it does a little foreword about about trick or treating, like the previous book did. It's not very long. It's only um, only goes up to page sixteen, and there's lots of pictures. So, more and more people around the world are unleashing their inner monster and are celebrating the scare fest this Halloween every year. While some countries, such as the United States and Mexico, have their celebration well and truly established in their annual year. Other countries are not only getting into the swing of fiery pumpkins and trick-or-treating. Now, the lady who created this doesn't live in the Northern Hemisphere. So their, like, Samhain Halloween uh, celebration is actually at the end of April. Because that's when you have those autumn changes in the Southern Hemisphere. But they still, on October 31st, like good trick-or-treating because, oh my gosh, who doesn't? Even though it's more of a spring-like... Uh, season down there and talking about the little monsters uh, the previous book that I read talked about Halloween trick-or-treating uh, being sort of a bribe for the kids so that they didn't vandalize houses and the thought of the candy being a bribe well it really truly does feel like that because I know quite a few kids who are like, yeah, let's go egg a house, but let's do candy first. And then got so tired after trudging around, trying to get enough candy to sate themselves, was too tired to run around and throw eggs. So it's definitely one of these thoughts surrounding Halloween that uh, I feel like it really suits it. Like let's bribe kiddos so that they don't wreck stuff. So, um, talks about the thinning of the veil and the celebration of the dead and, uh, no matter when you choose to celebrate this daring deathly festival, enjoy yourself and know that some of the rituals and symbols of the scariest of all nights are very old. Thousands of people for you for thousands of years have carried torches 
at night under the moon and got a fright in the local burial grounds, Patrix and their friends and asked spirits for a glimpse of their future. So the way to use this deck, uh, single card divination, um, you can just pull one card. They also have a, a cute little ritual for uh, dedicating the deck, which I actually really enjoyed. I haven't seen this uh, in other books and it's cute. Uh, you need bay leaves, sage, or frankincense, salt, preferably sea salt, and a silver candle. And then it has a little um, poem for dedication. And uh, I like the last part of it. I dedicate these cards to greater good. May only, may only good enter here. May only benevolent and truthful energy speak through these cards. And so it is. It's it's good. It's cute. It's good. So. We have the actual cards, like the last one, have a nice big picture of each card and a section that speaks about each one. Good size book, a little smaller than the, the Halloween tarot deck, but still, I think this card, this stack of cards is actually smaller than the last one. It's not a 72. How many cards is it? deck. Probably something I should have researched before I started this. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah. I don't know how many cards are in this deck. Doesn't seem to say. You might be able to, to sort of assume that is a standard Oracle deck. Well, I guess there's really only one way to figure that out since it's not really written anywhere. Wait, let me see. Oh, 36. All right, so we have 36 cards here. Uh, have them in order. Uh, and I want to show you that these pictures are really, really pretty. Now you can see that they are Oracle size, so they're a little bigger than the standard tarot deck. This is the standard tarot size, and the Oracle deck is definitely wider and just slightly longer. So, ancestors. The legacy, the love and legacy of our DNA. I think this is a beautiful card. You have a tree with a DNA strand going up the middle of it in moss. The, the thought that we are the product, of course, of many, many, many generations of love is a happy thought indeed. We have the apple, risk and reward. I just think of Snow White. Now this is barmbrack, which is a type of bread. I thought this was interesting that she included in this in this one. Maybe it's more prevalent in the Southern Hemisphere because I've never seen this done up here. Or maybe it's just an older tradition that I haven't come across. I mean, I've heard of putting things in bread and getting pieces out of it, but it seems like a very old tradition. So let me read you the bit there because you may not know what that is. Because I've only barely been exposed to it. A pea, a cloth, a coin, a ring, and stick within a loaf of speckled sweetness. Slice it and eat it. A glimpse of fate's completeness. So, you put those objects in here. And if you get the coin, it indicates prosperity and good luck. If you get... Um, the pea meant no marriage will occur for you. Uh, Menting a ring. Finding the ring would meant a marriage was certain. The stick is to be avoided at all costs, indicates disputes and unhappiness, and finding the cloth meant bad luck and little money ahead. So, hmm. I feel like that's not a really good, <laughs> like five things and like three out of the five aren't exactly happy things, but you know, I guess people back then just sort of expected there not to be good fortune. Uh, we have the black cat. Fortune meets opportunity. Uh, 
Cauldron. Aren't these pictures just gorgeous? Uh, Synergy and Healing. Got a beautiful pentacle behind it. Just really is a lovely card. We have the Dawn, the Light After the Darkness. We have Death, and you have a Death Moth and a Skull uh, in this picture. And um, Death typically represents changes, so the eternal cycle begins here. Uh, I guess it's more of a cycle card instead of a change card. Eternal Love. This is a pretty spooky card for a love card, but it is a Halloween deck. You've got two skeletons holding hands. Love is love is love, and it transcends physical death. I still feel love for my grandparents, and they've been gone for a while, so I, I feel that. Forgiveness. Reducing Burden. Now, there is no smaller book that comes with this one. This is the book that you have to use if you're going to read this deck. So there is no tiny white book. Ghosts. Regret. She's pretty cool looking. She's in some sort of brick room with windows. Translucent and unseeing eyes. Pretty cool looking card. Graveyard, Unnecessary Fear. I guess we shouldn't be fearing death. Hearth, happiness in our hearth, happiness in our hearts and homes. Having hearth and heart, I suppose they're, um, well, similar for a reason. And I like the fact that this is, it's got a candle and some bread and the fire and the very top you can see a gargoyle. He's of the spookies. Invisibility. Interesting card to have in an oracle deck. Jack-o-lantern. I don't think that you can have Halloween something without some sort of jack-o-lantern imagery. Become pretty, pretty permeated in uh, the Halloween lore. Joy. Now, Halloween and trick-or-treating, definitely a joyful thing. Excitement, costumes, all of that, quite joyful. I feel like fall in general is probably my happiest time of the year. And then we have Lady de los Muertos, acceptance and equality. It is a beautiful card. I love it when decks include the Mexican Day of the Dead stuff in it, just because I, f I don't know. I know I'm not Hispanic, but I just think it's so beautiful. I just, it just tugs at my heart. The Lamp, Remembrance. Um, a lot of people during Halloween would put lamps in their windows so that the spirits of their ancestors could find their way home to rejoin them and enjoy their company. Midnight, the most magical hour of all. Got a lady with a pocket watch and a watch behind her. It reminds me, of course, of Cinderella and the clock striking midnight and her thing turning back to a pumpkin. We have Mummy. Apparently this card in the deck means change. Night Song, which is not something I've ever seen in any of these things, but they call it a hidden talent. Birds, of course, that only sing their beautiful song at night would sort of be a hidden talent. We have Owl, Wise Seeing, Wise Action. I feel like this deck is not just Halloween, but has some of the fall um, imagery in it. Uh, and some nature imagery, which is very nice. And then we have scrying, crystal ball work. We have a skeleton, strength. Wait, let me go back to the crystal ball. Yeah, intuition. Scrying is intuition, sorry. Strength. 
I guess if you would think of your bones underneath your skin as being the strength of your body. And then we actually have a series of skulls here. The skull of darkness, blind spots in your life, the skull of flowers, creating through the ashes. I have to tell you, I am extremely creative when my heart is broken, so I really connect with this card. Illumination, the skull of light. It's a really cool looking card, I feel. I don't know. I think I'd be excited to get something like this in a, a reading. Skull of stars, infinite possibilities. We have the spider, community and web weaving. We have the veil. An interesting way of putting the veil it of course reminds me of the oracles who are typically covered their eyes the future seeing without seeing and of course it's hard to have some sort of Halloween deck without a vampire emotional intelligence we have the underworld where all things pause and begin again Got a skull and a pomegranate, which of course brings to mind the story of Persephone and her mother Demeter looking for her and having to stay with Hades because of the three pomegranates she ate for one each a month a year. And trick-or-treating. Mischief and play. It's a good thing about oracle decks. They can pretty much take whatever they like. They don't have to follow the standard tarot stuff, so cards like these end up turning up and this is a great card like we have no idea what the gender of these two people are but you've got a ghost and like a demon-esque helm on it although it looks like exactly like the same picture from the gargoyle now that I'm thinking about it Let's go find the hearth mm -hmm. where is the hearth do, 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 do. Cauldron. Pick back. Dawn, death, eternal love. Ghost, ghost of this. Graveyard. Hearth. It is. It's a very, very similar picture to the gargoyle at the top of the hearth. Which I find fitting, considering, you know, these are kids. They're going from people's hearts to people's hearts. That's what trick or treating is. So, that belongs over. Werewolf. Exploring wildness. We all like to explore our wildness on Halloween moon in the background and some looks like some tree branches and obviously somebody changing winter i find it's interesting that she included winter in the halloween i know that there's been times where we have had um snow during halloween but i find it interesting that she included it in a halloween oracle deck the sacredness of pausing i suppose it is the cusp of winter and the witch the Earthly Weaver of Worlds. And yes, I looked up that face. It is definitely the lady who made these cards. <laughs> She's really great in this. I adore this. This is such a great image. Last but not least, Zombie. Control. So, now that we have gone through all the cards, I'm going to do a small little reading. We're going to do the jack-o'-lantern spread, which I am so excited to try. All right, so the jack-o'-lantern divination. This is highly protective and illuminating spread. You will pull six cards. Card one, the heart of the issue of the question. Card two, the hidden issue. Card three, the major obstacle. Card four, the major fear. Card five, the solution. Card six, what will happen if you engage the solution? Well, that's interesting. I've seen a lot of people do like solution, but they don't say like what happens if you use the solution. I feel like that's that's interesting. 
I like this. All right. I hope you love my little my little skull. I got myself some really interesting uh, like lacy cloth tops. There's a, a white cloth underneath this. Uh, I think I might next time I might use the black one with this because this is really cool looking. And uh, I don't know, I just sort of love it. I think it suits this one. I'm probably gonna use the same one when we do the. Santa Muerte, Day of the Dead cards. Because why not? The uh, the eye cards are the eye. One of these is really cool for divination and stuff. But I feel like if I'm gonna do an entire deck of, of skulls, which is that is that that one, I feel like it needs to be on a skull background. And I knew there was a whole bunch of skull cards in this one, so obviously good thick cards. You've got. Some shine to them. They're certainly not matte in any way, shape, or form, and they're a bit unwieldy to shuffle, as most oracle decks are. Ooh, yes. So, Let's see, we should do it this way. It'll be the first time that I'm actually using this out of order at all. I've used an oral deck, oracle deck before. I usually stick to tarot. But let me tell you, I'm excited to use this one. Certainly in the future as well as just now. Doing it on camera just makes it that much more fun. Well, I feel like there's definitely been some issues shuffling, so we're going to do some cuts try to break up that we shall take from the middle of the deck. All right, so I'm going to lay it so that you can see it best. So I'm gonna start from the top here. So this is, let's see, card number one, card number two, Card number four. Card number five. Let me get to the little over here. And card number six. Okay. And let's begin. So. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I talked about the card earlier. So this is the heart of the issue or the question. So let me read from the bric-a-brac. When you pull the, uh, oh, barm brac card, it indicates a curiosity to know what is ahead, but it's important to balance with what is now. After all, we have the tools of change, we have tools to change our future should we choose. The sweetness synergy of the barm brac, all the ingredients, including the objects, are more completely powerful together than individually. One should encourage you to seek your own sweet spot. This is not, well, it's really not unexpected, let's be honest. I There's something in coming in my future that I've been told over and over and over again is coming, and yet I persist in asking the cards over and over again, okay, so when is this going to happen? What is going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. I want details. And so, you know, they're like, all right, relax. You don't need to do divination every other day because we're not going to tell you any sooner. You're just going to have to wait for it to happen. All right. So the second card is the hidden issue. Joy. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is accurate, isn't it? Okay. Well, uh, in front of all my beautiful viewers, watch me be uh, laughed at by the cards. Um, I stand here where I am, fully alive and present. Stress is a sham. <sighs> Should this card come up for divination, it heralds arrival of more happiness and prom profound joy into your life. It is a good omen. So that is the hidden issue here, that soon there will be joy. Ooh, the underworld. Wow, these are super, super accurate, dear Lord. 
Huh. Another realm, shadow-filled, travel from death's bed, where we stop and transform within the realm of the dead. I'm not going to tell you why that's super accurate, but, um, yikes. Okay, um... Should the Underworld card be present in your reading, you're being asked to consider exactly what you have to do to transform your life into something you find easier and more authentic to you. This may involve changing course, it may involve trials and tests, keep moving. Whilst things fall away, your life may appear bare for a while. This is temporary. Space is being made to which you can create the new. This is the major obstacle. So, <laughs> my obstacle is apparently transforming. <sighs> hmm. Haha, <laughs> he. Okay. Yeah, this is. The cards are laughing at me. This is great. I'm gonna go down to four, is the main fear. Haha, <laughs> the graveyard. Ugh. Yeah, like I said, a little, a little ac more accurate than I'm expecting. But what do I. This is what I get for putting them on camera. They want to show off to all their friends. Pull this card and know that you fear unnecessarily. Things are not as they seem. You can overcome your obstacles. The anxieties you have, although real, should be put aside, for they haunt you long term. So trust that you will know the correct steps and that you will act upon them. So that is the main fear. And the next one is the solution. Oh, I'm excited about this. Ghost. Ghost. Ghost is the solution? All right, let's read Ghost because I'm so curious in how this is supposed to help my situation. Uh... Should the ghost come gliding into your life during divination, it may indicate you have some regrets to let go of. Holding grudges or regrets is very some work and it weighs us down eventually. By taking action to free ourselves of these old burdens, we clear the way for more rightful and wise action for the future. We can begin to live again fully if we let go what was and step into new possibilities so the solution is is to let go of my regrets oh werewolf what an interesting reading definitely gonna have to write this down for later okay so if i let go of my regrets the werewolf asks us to consider the uh wait no The vitality, strength, and freedom of the animal versus the reason, control, and intellect of the man. Which one is the dominant force? What is the healthy balance between our animal nature and, and one is wild, free, and connected to nature? And our radically civilized human is separate from the dominant over nature. The werewolf asks us to consider this balance and delve into our own ideals of wildness, independence, and custodianship of the planet. When is the last time you spent all day outside? When is the last time you threw your, back, your head back and howled at the moon? Do you squash the vitality and curiosity of your body by... And my was sitting all in front of the, I work in front of a computer all day, dear Lord. Um, do you squash the vitality and curiosity of your body and mind by sitting all day in front of the computer? The world will challenge you to weave a balance between nature and your own nature. So let's go over this just a little bit. Stop divining too much. Joy is coming. Um, think about what I need to transform. Uh, Oh, my fears aren't necessary. Things will come when, and I'll know what to do when it comes. Uh, let go of regrets and balance your life. Yeah, this this is bizarrely, bizarrely accurate. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit stunned. Okay, it's not that I don't believe in the cards. It's just hitting kind of hard. All right, so this is the Halloween Oracle deck. A lovely deck and um, at least for me quite accurate thank you for watching this video I appreciate your views and comments and if you would like to watch more uh, reviews of tarot cards and eventually quite a bit of readings as I do readings with these cards once I review all of them for you um, subscribe and uh, stuff will come out as I am I have learned from other YouTubers not to burn myself out. So they will be out as I make them.
and uh, thank you for watching.